Well, we outreach 20th anniversary to you. Happy 20th anniversary. Let's give the Lord a clap offering. Amen. I got three napkins already here, so I'm, I'm ready. Let's go. Amen. But thank you, Pastor Marco and Lisa and your whole team for the opportunity to be here and for your generosity and for your kind hearts and um, the time that you've spent in Tri-Cities, the life, how you've impacted us as well with your story and with your family. And for having us here, my wife likes the hotel so much, she thinks we're on a vacation. Yeah. I was like, babe, I got to go preach. But we're glad to be here. Um, my name is Vlad. Just wanted to mention... Um, right behind me is there are um, there's a QR code I have a ministry uh, courses and books uh, translated into I think 12 languages not all books but most of them and you can get all of that stuff free of charge um, on my website um, if you are a small group leader looking for a small group curriculum we produce high quality specifically from a local pastor for small groups the only thing I ask you is do not use it without permission of your pastor so I don't want your pastor reaching out to me, but just make sure you reach out to them. But just that's also in there. Secondly, I just released a book called Host the Holy Ghost. And it was a very powerful book. It describes my relationship with the Lord as well as Holy Spirit's relationship with us. It's life-changing. A lot of people have been really marked by it. So you can pick, I don't know if we have any more in the lobby, but if not, you, there's an Amazon and you can get it on my website as a free download. It's available in Spanish, in Russian and many other languages. As I've highlighted, um, here's my wife, but not only my wife, but also we just had a baby boy, Samuel. Amen. So last year when I was here, you know, we, we still didn't have him. And uh, 13 years. So for those of you who could not have children, me and my wife both could not have children. And so we were told that by the by the medical professional professionals but you know but there is but God so I want to encourage you to not give up hope continue to serve God continue to serve God continue to serve the local church continue to serve the call of God in your life and put your needs in his hands and he will give peace into your heart and when his time comes he will bring the breakthrough amen so a little milk monster is three months old. We love him, miss him. Um, I'm a man under authority. I have a pastor. His name is Vasily. I serve under my pastor. And he's the one that's been with me. Uh, I've been with him since I was 13. And he's my covering and my pastor. So just wanted to let you know, if you want to walk in authority, you got to be under authority. Amen. And another thing is I, I'm not a YouTuber. I just happen to be on YouTube. But... I'm a local pastor. I'm a local guy. Very small city. I love local church. I love uh, people in the church. And I pastor a church in Washington State, not Washington, D.C. So it's over there. Um, not, not where the Biden lives, but where, where Bill Gates lives. <laughs> Both places need Jesus. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. I would like to um, come to a point right now and share with you a message. First of all, before I share the message for us, Pastor, I had this, this word that the Lord put on my heart. I'm not, not a prophet, and, um, but I couldn't shake it off. And I really f sensed uh, in Ezekiel, it says, The river came out of the temple, and as it was going east, east is the Dead Sea, the lowest point on earth. And the scripture says this, that every 1,000 cubits, without any, any other Thing, just every a thousand cubits so that's 100 1700 feet the river got deeper and wider and I really felt like because you've been intentional to direct the church toward the lowest point on earth which is the Dead Sea which is the broken people God's been measuring a fuller river I see a river going getting fuller Almost like every 1,000 cubits, God just measures another grace and another grace. And you're just stepping in into another measurement where God will expand things. Nothing new was done by you. It's just you're faithful to go to the lowest point on the earth. And God will automatically begin to increase the width and the depth of that river. 
And even what's happening next month with the month of being focused on the Holy Spirit. And I see not only, but there's going to be more miracles. There's going to be more mass deliverances, more campuses, more donations. Because you made the poor, the broken, as the focal point of the ministry. The river will get fuller and the river will get wider. And God measures that 1,000 cubits and God just measured another 1,000 cubits for this ministry for the glory of God. Amen. So I just had to say that. Amen. I want you to open to Esther chapter 4 verse 14. If you remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. Yet who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. I'm going to preach a message. I'm going to title it, Don't Fight the Snake on the Ground. The background of this story is this. Some 500 years before this story, there was a guy named Haman, the descendant of Amalekites, that God made a vow and promise he will wipe out Amalekites from the earth. And God has a king named Saul 500 years before Esther. Now this is the interesting part. Saul was actually a great ancestor of Esther. God calls Saul to wipe out, destroy Amalekites. Saul doesn't destroy Amalekites. He spares them. 500 years later, the descendant of Amalekites, Haman, shows up in Babylon. And 500 years later, the descendants of Saul, which is Mordecai and Esther, show up in Babylon. Write this down. Some battles didn't begin with you, but they will end with you. Mordecai comes to Esther and says, you will raise up for such a time as this. Where your daddy failed, you will win. Where your mama failed, you will win. Where the generation before you did not succeed, you will raise for such a time as this. See, some of you are fighting demons that you inherited. You didn't open the door. Somebody before you broke the door. And you were born with those demons. You were born with those abuses. You were born with those proclivities. And maybe you feel like, man, you've been dealt with an unfair situation. This is not fair. Maybe you've been blaming the ancestors. Maybe you've been excusing your behavior and saying, well, this is just the way I was born. See, whatever is not transformed in one generation gets transferred to another. That's why parents, we have to be careful because you're not just passing on your last name. You're passing on your demons. You're not just passing on certain hair color and eye color. You're passing up your characteristics. That's why when you go to the doctor, the doctor doesn't just ask you, hey, do you have cancer? He says, do you have cancer in your family? You're like, I don't believe in generational curses. Well, medical science does. And just because you accept Jesus in your heart, you still have your grandpa in your blood. You still have your great grandpa in your veins. He's flowing in there. And there are things you're fighting now. You're like, why am I fighting this? These battles didn't begin with you. It didn't start with you. Haman was Saul's problem. But even it wasn't even Saul's problem. It started even with Joshua. It started with Moses. It's been a generational thing going from one generation to another. And finally Esther settled. Finally Esther got married to a king. Everything is fine. And Haman shows up out of nowhere. But see, you never see mention of Amalekites after Esther again. I just want to speak to somebody prophetically right now and this might not be a sermon point but this is going to be a point in your life. It ends with you. Cancer ends with you. Premature death ends with you because you are in Christ. You are a new creation. 
And I know the enemy had access to your family, but you have something greater than the enemy's access. You have authority. You have the blood. You have the power of the Holy Ghost. You are the heir of Christ. You are a new creation. Maybe you've been having nightmares and depression and anxieties, and maybe it ran in your family. It ran into you. You are the Esther to your family tree. If you believe that for yourself, rise up on your feet and give God some praise right now. Somebody shout, it ends with me. Science tells us that we inherit our parents' genes, but they lay dormant until activated by bad environment and stress spike. That's why you can have a demon lying dormant. You can have cancerous cells passed on from your generations lying dormant, waiting for two things bad environment and stress spike. You have an acute stress situation and they wake up. A change of seasons, you move to a new area and that demon of loneliness wakes up in you and you're like, I don't know what happened. It's been lying dormant there. And that's why our goal isn't to make it dormant. Our goal is to make it defeated. Our goal is to destroy its grip over our life. That's why you need a good environment. You need a good church in your family. And that's why you need a prayer life. Why? Because prayer is our way to deal with stress. That's why you need to learn to speak in tongues. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Well, when the enemy comes in like the flood, God raises a banner against him. And you handle these situations and God brings total defeat to everything that was passed down to you. You're not responsible for what your parents passed on to you, but you are responsible for what passes through you. I'm going to say that again. You're not responsible. You're not responsible. You're not guilty for being poor, born poor, but you are responsible if you die poor. Your parents decided your history. You decide your destiny. Through Jesus Christ, you can be like Esther. You can allow Haman to wipe you out. Or you can rise up against Haman and says, not on my watch. I'm not like Saul. I'm not going to play games with Amalekites. I'm here to do business. I'm here to break bloodline curses. I'm here to break generational cycles of trauma. I'm here to break generational cycles of divorce. I'm here to break generational cycles of poverty. I'm here to break generational cycles of anger, depression, premature death, cancer, obesity. I'm here to break generational cycle of adultery, infidelity, and abuse. It ends with me somebody say this with me it ends with me how does it end with you secondly I want you to notice you have to take the battle into the prayer realm write this down Esther 4 16 it says go gather all the Jews who are present in Sushan and fast for me Neither eat nor drink for the three days, night and day. My maids and I will fast likewise. I will go to the king which is against the law and if I perish, I perish. Please understand, Esther is very well connected politically. Esther lives in the palace. Esther knows who and who in the palace. But Esther knows Amalek is not a political opponent. He's a demonic threat. And you don't fight demons with connections. That's why she didn't reach out to political connections in the palace. And she didn't say, I'm going to put on makeup. She says, we will go fasting. We will go praying. Why? Because this mean devil cannot be dealt with physical methods. We've tried physical methods before. But if the roots are spiritual, I got to bring an axe of prayer, an axe of fasting and chop that thing at the root. I'm tired of dealing with symptoms. I got to go and deal with the source. This girl was a beauty queen, but she had brains. She understood spiritual world. Not everything is demonic, but things are more spiritual than we realize. Some sicknesses, all they need is medicine. But if you've done medicine and they got worse, you might be dealing with Haman. Have you prayed about it? Some anxiety is not just 
physical and mental where you take some medication and and practice you know meditation or whatever that, that you do but if it prolongs it could be spiritual what I'm saying is this is that if you're fighting a real battle you got to fight that battle you can't bring a knife to a gunfight you got to bring a gun to a gunfight when you are in a spiritual battle and Esther understood Haman is not a political entity Haman has a principality behind him and if I ever stand against this problem I better have a spiritual backing see you're looking at your son and maybe you're saying he's a drug addict and you're like I just need to put him in the rehab that's good but you also need to understand it's more spiritual maybe you're looking at your marriage and you're seeing infidelity and you're seeing abuse and you're saying oh we just need counseling yes but sometimes it's more spiritual what I want to let you know is this is that you have to take your battle to a place where the devil cannot stand a chance to win against you this is where the title of the message comes from eagles don't fight snakes on the ground eagle doesn't fight a snake on the ground it picks it up in the sky and it changes the battleground it releases the snake into the sky because the snake has no stamina it has no power it has no balance in the air it is useless weak and vulnerable unlike on the ground where it's a powerful wise and deadly see that's why you have to take your fight to the spirit realm by praying by fasting by going to the altar somebody will look at you and say what is that going to do there is a God there is a God there is a devil and this God that I call on this God I get on my knees before this God that I deny a plate for and I say God I seek your face he moves things in the spiritual realm he changes decrees, shifts seasons. He causes a barren woman to have a child. He causes a drug addict to be set free. He causes a person who is broke to be prosperous. This God, somebody give God this praise. Touch your neighbor and say, take you to the spiritual realm. Touch your other neighbor that was not your first choice and said, don't fight the snake on the ground. Psalms 149 verse 6 through 9 it says let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance on the nations and punishments on the peoples to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with feathers of iron to execute on them the written judgment this honor have all his saints it's an honor to fight it's an honor to get in a battle but you have to understand you can't fight the devil on his terms you gotta take him out of his comfort zone that's why you gotta fight against those blankets in the morning push them aside and get on your knees that's why when the church doors is open you gotta be there first why because your house is on fire your house is has crisis you gotta run to the spirit realm Esther did not fight political problem with political methods she fought political problem with spiritual methods the Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal they are mighty in God if a beauty queen knew how to fast so can you if crisis came to her life and she realized this is a generational thing that seems not to go away I don't know what to do but I know how to fast I don't know what to do but I know how to pray I don't know what to do but I know to run to church and say somebody help me somebody help me and there is gonna be an army that will come around you and say we will fast with you we will pray with you we will see you through you will have a victory Don't close yourself in your own closet and do nothing run to church run to the altar you will win amen after a three-day fast I want you to notice the scripture says in chapter 5 verse 1 now it happened on the third day that Esther put on her royal robes and stood in the inner court of the king's palace 
across from the king's house while the king sat on the royal throne in the royal house facing the entrance of the house. Write this down. Remove the rags of problems and dress up in the royal garments of God's promise. Battles need to be won on two fronts, the spiritual and the mental. When you win the battle in the realm of the spirit, but you do not win the battle in the realm of the mind, you will be a person, let me give an example. There was an aquarium and they put barracuda fish inside of the aquarium. Barracuda fish, not Christian. They put small fish there and barracuda fish ate all the fish. That's why barracuda fish, not Christian. They put a glass in the middle of the aquarium. Barracuda fish on one side, little fish on the other side. Barracuda fish, a glass is see, is see through. Boom, goes to the other side. Hits the glass. Learns a painful lesson. There's something there I just can't see. The next day sees the fish hungry again, goes for it but now with less tenacity. By next few weeks Barracuda fish, fish learned the most important lesson. You do not need to go to the other side no matter what is there. After a month they removed the glass and Barracuda fish never went there. Why? A mental stronghold. God removed Israel out of Egypt but because Israel, is, Egypt was never removed from them. They lived in misery when they were free. Sometimes you can experience breakthrough in the realm of the spirit. It will never manifest because your mind has not been renewed to the promises of God and you're still dressed up in the rags of your problem instead of the royalty garments of God's promises, God's presence and God's principles. I want you to notice Esther did not show up in her fasting garments to the king. Why? Because the king has a dress code. You don't show up in those garments. See our king also has a dress code. He has a language he speaks and that language is not Espanol. That language is not English. That language is faith. The Bible says it is impossible to please God without faith. When you come to God, God knows your problem. God knows your situation. But you are dressed up in His promise. You are dressed up in confession of His promise. He stretches the scepter of His favor. Unlike Esther's husband who was clueless about what was happening in his kingdom, my king knows everything about my life. But he still expects me to show up into his presence dressed up, not down. Your problem will cause you to speak like it, think like it, have an attitude like it, dress down like it. The Bible says submit yourself under the mighty hand of God. It doesn't say under the mighty hand of cancer. It doesn't say under the mighty hand of poverty. It doesn't say under the mighty hand of your family dilemma. Which means your mind should not be a sidewalk where every devil and demon walks over. Your mind should be a reflection of God's promise and who you are in Jesus. Come hell high water. Come hell high water. I will dress up in the royal garments of God's promise no matter if I am barren. No matter if I am sick. No matter if I am broke. No matter what I've been. I dress up, not down. The Bible says whom the Son sets free is free indeed. But then in the same place it says you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. Well I have a question. If the Son sets me free why do I need to know the truth? Because the Son sets you free in the realm of the Spirit. The Scripture sets you free in the realm of the mind. And if you only have the freedom in the realm of the spirit, you'll never see it manifest in the eyes and in the physical realm because the mental realm created a blockage. Demons are cast out, strongholds are cast down and they're cast down by knowing the truth, not having the truth. Everyone has the truth. People don't know it. It's the same thing as having a bucket of pain. You can have a five gallon back bucket of pain, put it in your garage, none of the walls in your house will change color because you purchased paint. 
you got to take that pain from the bucket and put it on the wall. You got to take the truth from the Bible and put it on the wall here, on the wall here, on the wall here, on the wall here. Why? So that this gets painted and remodeled by the Word of God. Your circumstances are not changed yet. Your health is not changed yet. But something is changed inside. Now, this is what most of us will say. Well, Vlad, I will do that when God changes my circumstances. I want you to notice Esther did not get dressed up when Haman died. He was still happy. He was still walking. In fact, she invited him. The biggest lie that hinders people from renewing their mind is this. When God changes my life, I'll change my mind. The Bible says the opposite. Romans chapter 12 verse 2, it says when you change your mind, God will change your life. You don't, this is not mental gymnastics where you're like, oh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna walk around and say I'm pretty. I'm gonna walk around and say I'm successful. No, 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 no. We're not putting something on that's not there. We're taking the armor of God and putting it. God gives it, we put it on. God gives us the truth, we put it on. God gives us the royal garments, we put it on. We don't make it, we simply put it on. One time I got fined for not wearing a helmet. Now I had five of them in my garage, but I had a moped and I was riding it and I did not have a helmet on. I had a helmet in my garage, but police officer gave me a, a fine because I didn't have it on my head. See, some of you have the armor of God locked up in the closet of your doctrinal position, but you're not wearing it. And that's why the devil keeps finding you, finding you, finding you, finding you. You're like, I have it. The Bible says, put it on. Speak like you have it think like you have it have an attitude like you have it stop walking around say i'm just a sick old little me nothing ever good happens to me see that's wearing rags of your problems put on the royal garments of god's promise what does this mean i'm righteousness in jesus but you're still battling yes i'm a saved person fighting with sin i'm a blessed person fighting with poverty i'm a healthy person fighting with sickness I don't deny the presence of disease. I just don't give it a place of influence. I don't deny the problem. I don't give it a place of power in my mind. When my baby was born and when most of you were born, you came out head first. Before the fingers, before the body, the head has to come out first. And most of us, that's exactly how we come out of every problem, head first. Your mind has to come out of it. Uh, but you don't bring your mind out until the spirit realm changes. That's why Esther fought in the spirit. And then she changed her dress code. She came like nothing was happening. Are you with me? Let's go further. Esther 5.4. So Esther answered, if it pleases the king... Let the king and Haman come today to the banquet that I have prepared for him. Write this down. Learn to eat in the presence of your enemy. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. This is, you, this is how you know you got the victory inside and waiting for it to manifest. If you don't mind the angry stare of Haman. And he doesn't steal your appetite. See some people you lose your appetite because there is sickness. I can't worship why you just don't know what I'm going through. See God wants you to learn to eat in the presence of your enemy. In the presence of that problem. In the presence of that situation. You're like no God if he does not get removed I cannot eat. God says listen learn to eat in the presence of that situation. Learn to read the Bible in the presence of that dilemma. Learn to run to Jesus in the presence of that demonic attack on your life. Eat in the presence of your enemy. I can't do that. Esther did. So can you. Is it hard? Or oh, yes, it's not easy. But you can. A man that had a legion of demons. Mark chapter 5 verse 6 it said, when he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshipped him. How can a man having a legion of demons worship and run to Jesus? 
how can I go to church if I have all these problems in my life? How can I lift these hands if I have all these challenges in my finances? How can I go to a small group? My friend, this is how. God is not a means to a goal. God is our goal. We don't see God so he can solve a problem. We see God because he is God. He is worthy to be worshipped. He is worthy to be loved. Whether I feel it or not, whether my life has a hell breaking through or not, God is worthy. She gives him a dinner. She gives him a banquet. She doesn't panic. She doesn't throw a fit. She gives him a banquet. Why? Because she's not using her husband. She loves her husband. But she has crisis. But she's also a wife. You have to understand as a Christian, God is your king. No matter what hell you're going through, when worship starts, he is worthy of worship. You and I don't sing, worthy is me. When you don't feel worthy, you're like, I'm so unworthy, perfect. You're not singing your praises. You're singing his praises. Give your king a banquet. Give your king a banquet. But guilt is whispering in my ears. But shame is whispering in my ears. But Haman is looking at me. Let the enemy stare. Do not lose an appetite because Haman is in your presence. Turn to your neighbor say, eat in the presence of your enemy. Amen. And what happened there when she was in the presence of the enemy, the king says, what do you want? And this will be a good moment to panic, break down and say, dude, what are you doing? What kind of a king are you? Do you know what's happening? Do you even, have you even run a background on me? Do you even know who I am? You know I'm about to be killed? You know what she does? And I'm just amazed by her patience. She says, all I want is for you to come back again. I was like, girl, I mean, she's like cooking him. Through her almost like a little manipulative way she's just feeding him feeding him feeding him she's not complaining she's feeding him what most of us do because our mind isn't renewed when crisis hit our life our prayer loses praise loses thanksgiving and has only one thing why 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 and we come and we don't bring a banquet to our king. We bring a complaint list. And we wonder why that doesn't go anywhere. Because remember, your God is worthy to be worshipped first. Before he is good one to complain to. Nothing wrong to complain and lament. But she worships again. She gives him a banquet again. And then the second day, the enemy is there. I want you to notice what she does. Before the king removes the enemy, the queen removes the mask. She told him something she never told him before. She told him who she really was. See, God can't change who you pretend to be. His presence has to be a place where you get real and raw and you remove the mask. Some people are afraid to do that because that means that God will remove the crown. He won't remove your identity when you get real with your issues. When you bring your sin, when you get honest about your struggle, when you get honest about your addiction, when you get honest about your dishonesty, when you get honest about your cravings and you say, God, this is who I am. I know you love me. I know you gave your son for me, but God, I do have this problem. I've been blaming it on other people, but I'm here and I'm taking ownership for this and I am repenting for this and I am sorry. When when you remove the mask your king doesn't get angry at you he gets angry at Haman he never got angry at Esther he got angry at Haman see when you confess your sin God begins to remove the enemy when you confess your wrongs God begins to deliver you from the power of that enemy as long as you're blaming as long as you're concealing as long as you are hiding as long as you're pointing fingers God cannot remove your Haman 
remove the mask and God will remove Haman remove the mask and God will remove the spirit remove the mask and God will remove that principality remove the mask and God will break that grip something will break inside of you and Haman was hanged but the story doesn't end there Esther 8 11. by these letters the king permitted the Jews who were in every city to gather forces and protect their lives to destroy to kill and to annihilate all the forces of any people or province that would assault them both little children and women and to plunder their possessions I want you to notice to destroy to kill and to annihilate but thief doesn't come to steal, kill and destroy. Three-part strategy is reversed. Haman is dead. His plot is not. The king does not remove the plot. Write this down. Whatever God hasn't removed, he will empower you to resist. The king removes Haman. But he doesn't remove the plot. He simply gives power to the Jewish people, marked for destruction. Says, now let's reverse the roles. You kill, you destroy, and you annihilate. Meaning you fight back. You fight back. Because when I created you, I created you to have dominion. When you lost that dominion to sin, you were in need of deliverance. But when I brought my son Jesus Christ back through the gift of righteousness and abundance of grace, you will reign in life. Jesus came and said, I saw Satan fall like lightning. Behold, he didn't say, I give you freedom. He said, I give you authority to trample upon snakes and scorpions. Some of you have been going from deliverance to deliverance. But I'm here to remind you, you need to go from deliverance through discipleship to dominion to dominion and some of you need to put up a fight and fight back no God remove everything but see God isn't just interested to make you free he wants to make you a soldier God isn't just interested to take everything out he wants to empower you and he can do that if he removes every enemy out of you. See, when you are in Egypt, God delivers you from the enemy. But when you are in a promised land, God delivers the enemy to you to drive out. Some of you have entered into the promised land and you didn't even realize it. Because dominion is not being free from battle it's being free from bondage God never delivers us from a battle God delivers us to a battle because battle is the privilege of the free people bondage is the lot of the slaves but battle only free people can fight only free people can fight back and the king gave Esther death of Haman but says now the plot of Haman is within your authority you can kill you can destroy and you can annihilate and that's exactly what they did whatever God didn't remove he has empowered you to resist Joshua 3 1 now these are the nations which the Lord left that he might test Israel by them. That is who had not known any of the wars in Canaan. This was only that the generation of the children of Israel might be taught to know war. So God leaves some things on purpose. Not so that they can be known to know deliverance. But so that they can know war. What if the stuff that's left is God empowering you to take authority? Tell that devil to leave you. Tell that sickness to get out. Tell that mountain to move. Tell those dry bones live again. Tell those demonic voices, shut your mouth. Rise to your feet. Somebody shout, I have authority. Somebody shout, it ends with me. In Jesus' name. 
I want us to lead just in a prayer of renouncing right now and then want to give a call for salvation. I believe because we have so many overflow rooms we don't have the ability to right now invite everybody to the front and minister and we do have kids with us tonight so we want to be very sensitive to that but I want to lead you in just a few simple prayers you can place your hand on your heart if you would like repeat them those of you who came in need of deliverance this is your moment say this with me say I break all generational curses spoken and unspoken on both sides of my family going back 10 generations in Jesus name say I renounce every form of witchcraft all sorcery all divination and all occult involvement every form of false religion known or unknown in Jesus name I renounce every ungodly soul tie and immoral relationship I repent and ask forgiveness for any sexual immorality in my past or in my present I renounce all hatred all anger all resentment all revenge all retaliation all unforgiveness all bitterness in Jesus name see I renounce any kind of demonic spirit attacking me at night in my dreams in Jesus name so in the name of Jesus I command any unclean spirit familiar spirit or ancestral spirit that has entered through one of these doors right now come out come out say I command spirit of witchcraft and false religions to come out in Jesus name every spirit of stealing killing and destruction come out in Jesus name say every demonic spirit on the outside on the inside right now come out in Jesus name come on place your hand on yourself let's take a deep breath just breathe it out in the name of Jesus I take authority over every unclean spirit I command it to leave right now Holy Ghost fire in Jesus name be free in Jesus mighty name those chains break right now in the name of Jesus Christ those generational cycles those demonic spirits hunting and following you when you came here be broken right now in Jesus name amen 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 come on let's give the Lord a clap offering something is lifting something is shifting somebody is being disconnected right now from the cursed family tree and connected to God's blessing in your family in your life every head up every eye open in all the sanctuaries and overflows if you're in this room maybe you got invited today I don't know the situation how you end up here if you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior I want to give you that opportunity today to get right with God if you are here and you backslid you walked away from Christ I want to tell you that the Bible says that the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life the scripture says that none of us are good enough to go to heaven Jesus Christ came 2,000 years ago and died on that cross for us sin is often one thing it wants to separate you from God it wants to destroy your family it wants to destroy your health and it wants to drag you to the lake of fire forever and sin is already probably destroying you bringing you shame and guilt and separation as you're standing here right now I want you to just look at me don't pay attention to the motion that is happening in the front look at me for just a moment this is the night Jesus Christ has brought you in this room the greatest decision in your life is not to get married find a job or even to get a million dollars or get healing or get a deliverance the greatest decision in your life is to have sin removed shame removed guilt removed your name written in the book of life maybe you're standing here today you're like glad but I'm Catholic the Bible doesn't say that you need to be Catholic to be saved the Bible says you need to believe in Jesus and repent of your sin and I know what kind of Catholic you are Catholic on Sunday alcoholic on Saturday 
That doesn't get you saved. Oh, but I go to church, Pastor Vlad. Well, I went to a coffee shop this morning. It did not make me into a latte. Nobody becomes a Christian by joining a church. You know how many times I missed my airplane by being in the airport because I was too busy. You can get to church and miss Jesus. But my here today right now is I am standing like one of those people at the gate and saying, hey, this flight is boarding. And I'm here to let you know, heaven doors are open. God is making a call and He's saying, if you are a sinner, if you are lost, no matter what you've done, I'm here to forgive you. I'm here to wash you. I'm here. I got a seat for you purchased by the blood. And this airplane, this Christ will take you to heaven. It will bring heaven into your heart. Right now is that time. You may say, but I I'll do it tomorrow. You're not guaranteed tomorrow. One thing you're guaranteed is you will die. We don't know when. Don't gamble with your eternity. Give your life to God right now. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. Because if you're ready, I'm going to ask you to get out of your seat and quickly run to the front. Let's get out of your seat. I know it's going to be hard. There's a lot of people. Just, just get out. Get out of the seat and just come to the front. The second overflow, third overflow, the fifth overflow online. Just drop it in the chat. I want to be saved. Just quickly come out of your seat. The Lord is knocking on some of your hearts and saying, this is you, son. I've been waiting for you. This is you, daughter. I've been waiting for you. Come back home. Come back. Come back home. Come back to the cross. I'm ready to forgive you. I'm ready to wash you. I'm ready to save you. I'm ready to change you. I'm going to break the chains. I'm going to break the demons over your life. I'm going to break the strongholds over your life. Come on. Don't let the devil hold you back. Don't let the shame hold you back. Don't let the guilt hold you back. there anybody else come on if you brought a friend with you maybe from your school or from your neighbor your neighbor you can ask him right now says pastor talking to you if they say not says let's go friends don't let friends go to hell come on bring them bring them with you don't drag them but ask them if they want to you come with them let's get them saved not one person should leave this auditorium or the overflow today without knowing Jesus let's make hell empty Let's bring more people to Jesus today. Let's see the Lamb receive the reward of His suffering. He wants to wash you with His blood right now. He wants to wipe the shame and the guilt out of your mind. Those of you who are in the front, I know ministers are praying for you. Let me lead you just in one prayer, but they'll lead, they'll just pray more for you. Those of you in the front, in the overflow and online, I want you to say this out loud with me. Say, Lord Jesus Christ, I believe you are the Son of God who died on that cross for a sinner like me. I'll repent of my sin. I am so sorry for everything I've done. Wash me with your precious blood. I give you my life. All its broken pieces. Deliver me. Save me. And fill me with the Holy Spirit. And I promise to follow you all the days of my life. And right now, let the ministry team pray for you. Just let them pray for you. Just, just stay there. Don't go anywhere. Those of you that are watching us online, we're going to drop a link in the chat right now that you can click. It's called igotsaved.com. Just fill that out so that we can stay in touch with you. Church, as the ministry is going on, I want to pray for those who are sick right here in this auditorium and in the overflow. If you have a pain in your body that you came with, 
I want you to place your hand upon the part of the body where there is this discomfort, pain, or maybe some broken thing. If you had a, an accident, a working out injury, a car accident, maybe you have a doctor diagnosis that you can't have children, or maybe you have diagnosis that you're gonna die in a month or two. Let's place your hand there. We're gonna pray together. The God we serve is the God of impossible. He is Jehovah Rapha and He can heal you right there where you are standing. Doctors do their best. Doctors treat Jesus heals. Put your hand there on that sick part of the body and say this with me. Say, my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Say, my body is not for sickness and it's not for disease. Say, right now, I take authority of a spirit of infirmity and that sickness and I command you leave right now say oh Holy Spirit heal me by the stripes of Jesus touch every system every organ right now Come on, take the next few seconds, just pray for yourself. Keep your hand there, just ask the Lord to heal you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you that the healing virtue of Jesus will touch the digestive system right now. I ask you that the healing virtue of Jesus will bring healing to those eyes. I command the ears to open right now. Every gastritis, go right now in the name of Jesus. I rebuke that asthma in Jesus' mighty name. Every issue, every cancer cell, every tumorous cell, every cyst, every fibroid, in the name of Jesus, leave right now. Be burned by the fire of the Holy Ghost. I speak healing to the injuries of the back. I speak healing to the injuries of the joints. Arthritis, leave right now in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, bring your healing right now and restore in Jesus' name. Amen. For those of you who prayed, I want you to do something for me. I want you to, to do something you could not do without pain. That's right there where you're standing. You had a back pain? Do something you couldn't do without pain. If you had a broken uh, something with your toe, just move it there right now. Just do something you couldn't do without pain. And if the lady can give me the testimony QR code, if you notice that the pain is gone, if it's big or small, do something, do me a favor. Just pull out your phone, scan this QR code, and just let me know. I just want to rejoice with you, and that's all. And so this will stay here for just a few seconds. So if you notice that the pain is gone and you experience healing in your body, just scan this QR code so we can glorify Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give God some praise right now. God bless you. Come on, can we give God some praise if you receive tonight? How many are ready to go out there and annihilate the enemy? How many are ready to annihilate the enemy? It's time we start to fight back and take control. So church, church, tomorrow is going to be one of the biggest days in the history of our church. We need to come ready. Tomorrow morning, we're going to be ready for the growth conference. And tomorrow night, 7 p.m., Mike Signorelli is going to be bringing a word to this house, coming all the way from the East Coast. Invite people, invite friends. I think all of us know at least one person that should have been here tonight. Invite them, let them know. Bring them to the house tomorrow. Church, we love you so much. If you need prayer, come to the altar. We'd love to pray with you. But otherwise, God bless you. We have, there's books available for sale. Pastor Marco's books, Vlad's books that he mentioned earlier. You can go in and get those on your way out. But we love you. God bless you. Lord, bless all those that go tonight. Bless them with rest, God. And we pray that we come tomorrow ready to receive from you. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we say, amen. God bless you, church. Have a wonderful night.